vertical information sharing uh, vertical linkage, it coordinates activities between the top and the bottom of the organization. The hierarchical referral are the vertical lines which identify the chain of command. Rules and plans, they create vertical links. Reports, computer systems, and written information are vertical information systems. Are you guys okay with this in, uh, vertical information sharing? Yes. So if we, when you use the computer systems, it's also another vertical. A lot of rules, plans, that makes more vertical. Uh, hierarchy is more vertical. Now let's look at horizontal. Horizontal linkage, it coordinates activities across. So here it's more across the organization. And they're not traditionally drawn on the organization charts. So you normally don't see this on the organization chart. And uh, there are things that will help this, like information systems also helps the uh, horizontal. For example, remember when you do your project or you do your homework? See, when you do your homework alone, you send it to the instructor, it's more vertical. Yes. If you go with your friends and you share and you do like an online chat room, that becomes more of horizontal. Do you see? Uh, uh, direct contact also lays on rule. Lays on rule is when you have someone in the middle that connects between different departments. Uh, task force is when you have a group of people, they have a mission. So we need to find what is the best advertisement for the company, right? So that would be a task force. Uh, full time integrators, these people who do integration. And then teams, uh, any teams, whether it's virtual or uh, face to face. Are you guys okay with this? Direct contact is, uh, let's say, if one department talks to another department, so direct contact, or through a liaison, so some middle person who connects to these people. Okay. Here we've got this uh, uh, ladder of uh, mechaniz mechanism for horizontal linkage. Here we've got low cost of coordination in time and human resource and here we have high cost of coordination in team and uh, human resource here we've got low amount of horizontal coordination requirements and here we've got high amount of hor horizontal coordination required and here it show you those uh, three you know five stages uh, of uh, let's say mechanic mechanism uh, that used for uh, horizontal linkage. So what is the difference between teams and information systems? Uh, teams, they require a lot of people that do a lot of amount of coordination and uh, can be time consuming and uh, do a lot of uh, coordination uh, horizontally. On the other hand, information systems don't require a lot of time and human resource and they have less amount of horizontal coordination okay so if we want to do in our company to be more horizontal we can do more teams you see team 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 but the teams are expensive but we can also use information systems which is computer systems that can also allow us to work horizontally did you guys get it let me give you a simple example. Remember your project. If you want to do your project on a team, if you do face-to-face, -face, team will be here. Take a lot of time. You can do a team, but online, virtual. Information system will allow it. It will be there. It is not very rich, but it works. It's low. Okay. You can use someone in the middle. Uh, you can use a full-time integrator, like one person responsibility to connect all the team. Do you see? Uh, this is more expensive. This is less. Let's see. Organization design alternatives. Uh, required work activities, reporting relationships, and departmental grouping options. So when you decide your company, remember when you design your home? Big kitchen, small kitchen? Design your home. You know, what do you do? Do you see, remember when you cut chicken? One person cut the head. One person cut the wings. Do you see? So, 
do they need to report to each other? Do they just need to sit next to each other? Do they need to talk to each other? Do you see? So that will help. That will determine what is your objective. And depending on your objective, you decide uh, how you design your company. Now, we've got one, two, three, four, five ways to group or design your company. We have functional, divisional, multi-focused, horizontal, virtual network. On the exam, it will show you A, functional, B, divisional, C, multi-focused, D, horizontal, and E, virtual network. And you will have to identify, is this company of which type, okay? Let's go through each one of these. First one here is the functional. A functional activity is grows by common function. That's when you have in your company, accounting department, marketing department by function. So these people, they do function of accounting. These people do function of marketing. Do you see? All special skills, knowledge are consolidated. So we promote economy of scale. Everyone inside the marketing department is uh, expert in the marketing and everyone inside the operations is expert about the operations. We've got uh, slow response to environmental changes though and it's prevalent approach but few companies can respond in today's environmental without horizontal linkage. Okay. Now let's look at the other one which is the divisional structure. A divisional structure we go by product structure or strategy business unit. Do you guys remember companies that doesn't have accounting department, uh, marketing department? No. They have product X department, product Y department. Do you see? So those companies, they are focused by what product they do. Okay? Are you guys okay with this? For example, uh, do you guys remember a company called, uh, you remember Procter & Gamble? They, they sell Tide and Ariel yes, yes. and uh, Perti Plus and uh, Pantene. Inside this company, when they group it, they don't have a marketing department. That is for all, no. They have Pantene department. And then under Pantene department, they have their own marketing. Do you see? So this is grouped by products. So they're divisioned according to the product or service or product group, okay? Uh, if you go to uh, uh, LIU, School of Business, School of Pharmacy, do you see? So we go by the product or service or type, do you see? We don't go by the function as much as by the product group or service. So LIU, functional or Divisional. 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 Okay, it's not by the function. Okay. So uh, let's take another example. Let's say if you go to the company where, uh, you know, you go to, uh, uh, let's see, we'll see more examples as we go. Uh, good for achieving coordination across functional departments and it's suited for the fast change, uh, loses economy of scale and it lacks technical specialization. Now let's look at these two here. Do you see this department here, company, Infotech president? They have R&D, manufacturing, accounting, and then uh, marketing, okay? And then we've got this divisional structure where we have here electronic publishing, office automation, and then virtual reality. And then under each of those products or services, they have their own functions. Do you guys see? Do you see how that works? So the marketing for the virtual reality is completely separate than the marketing for the office automation. It's completely separate than the marketing for the electronic publishing. Okay? We also have a geographical structure. In a geographical structure, Organizing to meet needs of users or customers by geography. Many multinational corporations are organized by country. Focuses uh, managers and employees on specific geographical regions 
and the strength and weaknesses, strength and weaknesses similar to the divisional uh, organization. Are you guys okay with this geographical? Okay. And this is an example. Uh, we've got this um, uh, matrix structure, which is the fourth type. We've got multi-focused with strong horizontal linkage. Uh, conditions for a matrix is share resources across organization, two or more critical output required, uh, products and technical knowledge. We've got this environment is complex and uncertain. And allow organizations to meet dual demand. Largest uh, weakness is that the employees have two bosses and conflicting demands. Did you guys understand this matrix? No. Let's see this matrix. Yeah, let's see the matrix. Uh, this is CAC Bank, okay? Inside CAC Bank, they have branch A, branch B, branch C, and branch D, okay? Who would like to be our branch A? Me. All right, branch B. Wanna do branch B? Branch C? Okay. So if we say branch A, B, C, D, okay, just to make it easy. And then here we've got those departments on the top, which are design, manufacturing, marketing, control, and procurement. So one, two, three, four, five. So all of these people, you can see they have big authority. Let's say the marketing, for example, uh, the marketing person, who's the marketing from here? You want to be the marketing? And you don't like to be okay. marketing here? So if this person is the marketing, they say we've got this new advertisement. Now, all of the branches should have the advertisement, right? Okay. And all of the branches have to understand what the advertisement message says. And if the customer come and ask about this new product or service, they should all be able to answer, right? Now, if you go to the branches, every branch has a manager. Yes. Does the manager... Uh, is responsible for the branch yes. and everything inside the branch. Yes. Now, inside the branch, there is one employee for marketing. Because okay. every branch needs to have someone responsible for sales, right? Yes. For example, the branch in Taiz, they have to have the marketing guy for the branch of Taiz for CAC Bank, right? Yes. The branch in Sukhatra also needs to have a marketing guy who's going to market the branch inside Sukhatra, right? So if you are the marketing employee inside Sukhatra, you have two bosses. You have the branch manager, who's your boss. Yes. That's the guy you see every day. But you also have another boss, which is the marketing manager inside the head office. Yes. Do you see? So this is what we call matrix organization. We have managers right here, and they have all of the employees in for, uh, underneath them. And then we have the functions on the top, and every function has employees under them. Then if you are working here, if, this is, if your job is, uh, let's see, uh, if your job is somewhere right here, then you have one boss who is in the head office, which is the marketing vice president. And manager. And you have the manager on the branch level, who's also your other boss. So if your boss says, do this, and the other boss says, don't do this, you're confused, right? right? And that's one of the disadvantages of a matrix organization. But is the matrix organization sometimes important? Sometimes it's important because we want every branch to focus on their territory, let's say. The guy in Sugatra, you're responsible for Sugatra and get all the customers there. And But at the same time, we want to maintain the same, let's say, marketing image for the entire location, right? For all the locations, for all the branches. This way, you have to have some sort of a responsible for the function. So basically, those people here, they do functions. Here we've got this more of... Let's see, function. On the other hand, those people, they're more into the product, maybe, or maybe the branch. Okay? So this is more of division. Does, 
Are you guys okay with this? Any questions on this? Did you guys get it? All right, great.